And with that, just invite Sue up and we'll take any questions, comments. I will preface anything by saying I am neutral in the caucus process. So, uh, you know, asking me about the candidates, like ask me which one of my kids I love the most. You know, you're going to get the same answer <laughs> on all of them. But it, is, uh, but it is pretty wild because I've never seen, I will say this from a political standpoint, I've never seen it on our side this fluid this late, uh, where it is completely wide open, uh, which to some degree is even more, uh, I guess, a better argument for getting involved because you really do have the opportunity to make a difference mm -hmm. uh, because it is completely unsettled and we're 90-ish days uh, out from caucus. Yeah. What's going to happen in four years when Florida or somebody else wants to remove their caucus to December 25th? I mean, what, what are we going to, are we going to end up having Thanksgiving caucuses in Iowa? Or? You know, are, are we, it seems like every year we get, yeah. we get close, earlier and earlier. I think the first thing is to understand the punishments that are in place now for Florida and those early states that jammed all of us up, those will happen. Um, they will be stripped of their delegates. There's no waiver uh, provision for that. In fact, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, which all got pushed up with Iowa, they're also going to lose half their delegates because there was no safe harbor for the other early states that moved up. Now, I guess I didn't mention this in my first remarks. We do not actually assign delegates. Uh, the Republicans don't assign delegates on caucus night. We do that at our state convention in June, so we're not subject to any penalties. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, going forward, I would advocate that if you're going to blow up the calendar like Florida, you, you probably should be stripped of all your delegates uh, going forward. But anything that's done has to be done uh, prospectively for 2016. We can't go back and, and change the rules for 2012. Uh, and I would also argue that uh, if you do take those delegates away, and if, you're forced, if you force other states to move up, those delegates should be reallocated to the early states that suffered the hardship. Uh, now, I don't know what kind of receptive audience I'll get. Uh, the RIC, but I'm sure going to advocate for it. Uh, and then the other thing, and this is something that, you know, I've said it public, I'll say it here, you know, the prior administration at the RNC, Chairman Steele, uh, they dropped the ball when we awarded the convention to Tampa. Uh, by knowing that Florida was a habitual offender, there should have been a clause in there. Uh, that if we're going to give you a $70 million economic benefit to your state, you shouldn't be the state that blows up the entire calendar. And, and here's why the calendar matters. You know, there's, I think we both agree that you know, the country faces significant challenges that you know, we need to be serious about addressing. So some people see this, well, what's this silly argument over right. who goes first and when they go? It goes back to what I talked about with getting more citizen involvement. Uh, when both of our committees passed these rules, the plan was, at least on our side, because that's where the action was, to elongate the process so more states have a say. And for delegates, for example, if your state awards delegates in a primary or caucus in March, it has to be done proportionally. You can't have a winner-take-all state. And the theory behind that was it will force the candidates to go to more, sta to more states. It will force the candidates to spread out across the state, not just rely on media campaigns. And at the end of the day, that's greater grassroots involvement into the process. Um, so I think that's... That's been the practical effect of, of what Florida is doing is it's going to limit the grassroots uh, involvement in the process. And in some degree, it's ironic that in trying to make themselves more relevant, they may actually decrease the choices that their own citizens are going to have. Because now with the compressed schedule on our side, if you don't do well in Iowa, you don't do well in New Hampshire, you're probably done. You're probably not making it to Florida. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, Florida has probably limited the choices their own voters are going to have. And I think that truly there, there is the political reality of the thing. The caucuses worked very well for President Obama. Had either Senator McCain or Senator Clinton been president right now, we would have been in a jackpot this time. The, the caucuses, when that system works well for the winner, then that national committee has you know, not very much impetus to change. Um, when, president, when Senator Obama became President Obama, he put in Tim Kaine, and then when Senator or when the Governor Kane went to run for Senate, he put in Congressman Wasserman Schultz. We have had support on our side for the caucus process. Um, I have said this before publicly too. When President Obama wins again, I think that 16 will be a little bit more protected. But this conversation happens all the time. It happens every time. We won't go any earlier this time than we did last time, and it worked. It worked just fine. But I will say that I think that the firewall of the calendar year in which the general is being held is so incredibly critical. You know, we think that this conversation is a tough one when we know we've got this brick wall of 2012. If that was breached 
you know, the, the, then what we would have, I fear what we would have, is we would have presidential politics looking like congressional politics, and the president would have to run all the time. Now, I know there are people who argue that the president, whoever it is, is running all the time, that they run from about three minutes after they get in, but that's not actually true. With a four-year term, knowing when it's going to be, you got at least a couple of, you know, two and a half years where you can actually govern. And I think that if we breach that, then it's Katie bar the door. I don't know where you'd stop. And then you will have the first, you know, all of a sudden then you're backed up against what, Halloween? I mean, I, I think that there's one thing about having the process begin in August, in September, in October, but there is an entirely different thing to talk about having the actual nominating process begin earlier than the year in which the election's going to be held. And I think that that's the firewall uh, that all of us have to, we have, we have to hang on to that. Um, this isn't, we talked about this on Iowa Press the other day, and then we talked about it in the, in the press thing afterward. This is not beanbag. And I know that a lot of people like to, oh, it's just politics as usual. It isn't. The, the, the argument about how and when we start the process to elect the leader of the greatest country on earth is really not for amateurs. It isn't beanbag. It's not, you know, I know people talk about it's a game of chicken or a game of chess. It isn't. This isn't a game. And the reason that I in New Hampshire have this position is because for 45 years, we have been able to discharge this responsibility as professionals and as people who understand that this, is, this isn't just about who goes first. There's not some junior high thing going on here with, you know, it, it just isn't that. Florida did this thing. They're gonna, you know, they're, they they did it last time. They blew it up last time. But the people in New Hampshire, the people in Iowa that are dealing with this on all sides. Uh, last time we worked together, but Iowa, the Iowa Democratic Party and the Republican Party of Iowa have been partners in this for more than 40 years. In fact, this time the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee, the RNC and the DNC, worked more closely on this calendar together, modeled after what we have done here on the ground for four decades. That's why it's so aggravating on their side that this got blown up, because the RNC and the DNC did a better job with this, right. modeled on how we do it here, than they've ever done before, um, with a lot of discussion. And it is, it is unfortunate to, you know, you agree to a set of rules. I think that's the junior high analogy. Kindergartners know that. You do not start a game and then a third of the way through, if you don't like the way it's going, stop the game and re-up the rules. No, five-year-olds know that. That is a basic, that is that is a universal preschool thing. <laughs> that's that everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten, know. you know, it's... So that's why it's disconcerting, and I, I would imagine, uh, it's not, I don't imagine, I know it's yeah. aggravating us all to get out. <laughs> Chairman, you had mentioned how important the turnout was to the Iowa caucus and continuing the Iowa caucus. What's your concern about a January 3rd day, day after what's probably going to be a holiday for most islands? Oh, uh, it is. You know, and, and this is something I talked about with, uh, in you know, it's, you know, this the topic here is in civility. We do a lot of talks on civility, but a lot of this is also based on relationships. And I think you know, you see the relationships Sue and I have relative to the caucus and and just generally being party leaders. The same goes with New Hampshire. And I had the opportunity to be out there in June. Uh, to get to know their party leaders. In fact, they entrust the setting of the date in the hands of one individual in their statements, their Secretary of State. And we spent a lot of time actually back in June talking about traditionally there's an eight-day window between Iowa and New Hampshire because the whole theory behind the Iowa caucus and why you know, New Hampshire doesn't view it as a similar threat to a uh, similar contest as a threat to their first in the nation primary is that it gives someone a chance to get ahead of steam out of Iowa, seven, eight days, come into New Hampshire, and then you know, New Hampshire does their thing. Uh, for the first time in 2008, that window got shrunk to five days, uh, January 3rd and January 8th in 2008. Not only did we have historic high turnout in our respective caucuses in 2008, but New Hampshire had an incredible turnout in their primary as well. So recent history would suggest starting right after the new year is not uh, problematic on turnout. Um, I think any, any advance or encroachment into the end of this year would be. Um, there's something you know, there's just something about, you know, that week between Christmas and New Year's where, you know, a lot of folks want to, you know, they've checked out, turned the mind off, you know, maybe they're not into work or they're working, you know, kind of flex hours. And, 
and I think kind of gearing things back up again at the start of the year refocuses uh, everybody. Now, for all the respective field teams and campaigns, of course, they're going to be here. They're going to be doing voter contact, and we'll see TV ads. Um, but I don't suspect, uh, and I know, you know, on our side, again, it's just a consequence of the fact that we've got the the attention and energy because we've got the contested uh, caucus. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any letdown. Uh, in fact, I would be surprised if we didn't exceed the 118,000 Republicans that turned out uh, in 2008. I have a question. Uh, yeah. The chairwoman mentioned a separate caucus website. I didn't know if uh, I, we have uh, in our presentation the Iowa GOP dot org or dot com uh, dot org, I believe. In our, do you have a separate website that our folks can go to to find out more about the? Yeah, there the there will be one, and then we'll have a series of mobile apps um, with all your precinct locations um, and kind of your your FAQ on on anything and everything you need to know about the Republican caucuses. So, yeah. And we just got that done too. Um, our tech guy, Mike Honeycutt, uh, just got that all sent off to Apple, and they're working. Um, I think the next one is great mm -hmm. to, to get them on both. So that we'll have that same kind of, um, you put it in, it gives you lo your location, you can register there. Again, we, you know, the, the registration piece, we kind of joked about that, but honestly, that, that he, we ended up with a huge registration advantage after the caucuses. Now, the Republican Party's eaten into that because they had a very competitive governor's primary where those candidates were out registering Republicans. And then they had a very, they're having a very competitive presidential primary. But that is the opportunity um, that the voter registration piece is an important part of this. Uh, and, and, you know, we clean up addresses and we, you know, we kind of lock down. I think one of the things that January 3rd is going to affect, to be honest with you, we um, are, we have a huge push on the uh, campuses. And that is going to be different because those kids will not be caucusing. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to really revamp and get and, and match their home addresses for the Iowa resident kids. Um, and you know, with the University of Iowa, for instance, that knocks out the University Democrats are working like maniacs over there. But of course, that'll knock out the Illinois kids. You know, so that I think that is the one demographic where going before the 15th of January is going to, you know, muck it up a little bit. But as you move forward in this, sort of watch this space. I am confident that shortly we will know exactly what the date is. But again, uh, the planning for that specific date is really the lift for the county activists on both sides. They're the ones, um, you think you're frustrated. You should, I can't imagine what his calls are like. Because <laughs> my, my run to, why don't you make him get this date set? And his run to, why don't you get this date set? So, But when we do get it set, it will be in that first, you know, I I'm, remain fairly confident that we have a window and you know what it is. It'll be after the first of the year and uh, before the Super Bowl and we'll be good. So we'll see you there. Thanks for your interest in this. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal. So thanks. Thank and I'll agree. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.